What you are looking at below me is a brand new BMW R18B. B stands for bagger. This is a new version of the R18 that has a windshield, a full fairing. It's got speakers, it's got side bags, and it has a wicked cool infotainment system and a bunch of gauges. So in this video, we're gonna walk you around every cool piece of technology and every feature on the bike. The crown jewel of the R18 is this 1802cc engine that BMW calls the Big Boxer. It's air and oil cooled, it makes 91 horsepower and 116 pound feet of torque. And well, yeah, this is really the reason that you want an R18, right? This motor is absolutely massive. It's got a huge footprint because it's horizontally opposed, so it sticks out a ton from the bike. And the craziest thing about it, which I'll show you in a moment, is that because the crankshaft rotates this way rather than that way, like it does on a V-twin, you can feel the engine turning the bike side to side. It's actually kind of cool. To fire up the R18, you start by hitting the power button. That's going to bring on your screen. And all you have to do, pull in the clutch and hit the start button. So you can see the bike kind of rotates as I start it, and then if I rev it, it's pretty cool. The other thing that I've noticed is that sometimes these handlebars oscillate a little bit. There's a little shimmy back and forth from the motor. That's kind of interesting. And then as it stops, it turns to the right as all that moving mass slows down. So it's very interesting. It gives the bike kind of a different character. But there's a lot more to this motorcycle than just the engine. BMW has thrown a ton of technology at this bike, and although he doesn't know it yet, the man who's gonna walk you through all of that technology is behind the camera. Take it away, Alex. I'm a pretty big fan of tech, so this massive screen up here is super bright and colorful. That makes me happy, but if you're more an old school guy like Case, these dials will make you happy up here as well. So start off with those. You've got a traditional analog fuel gauge, speedometer, tachometer, and then a power reserve, which is pretty interesting. So kind of works like the old, uh, like some old Rolls Royces where it'll actually show you how much um, I guess power you have left usable in the engine. So kind of weird, but cool to look at while you're going down the road. And then we can get to this massive screen down here. I really, really like the BMW system that they've been using with this jog dial over here on the left side handlebars. So you've got a menu switch and you can just scroll through there between media, um, telephone, settings, um, navigation, all that. So we'll start off over here with my vehicle. And um, if you come down into here, you can get access to a bunch of different parameters. So first off, you have my vehicle. It'll just show you your tire pressure. It's blank right now because the engine's not running. Um, range remaining and then battery voltage. You've got your trip computers with a ton of different information in there. A couple different uh, trip computers, tire pressure monitors, some more um, detailed information on that there, and then some service requirements as well. So super easy to stay on top of your maintenance. Um, if we go back out of there, we can also um, go over to the settings option. And then in here, you can mess with some of the other settings. So for example, heating, you can turn on and off the heated seat and heated grips. This bike has both. Best of all, you have this really awesome Marshall sound system. Um, so I can cue up some royalty-free music right here. And this stereo system is crazy loud. So I can just crank the volume right here. And even with the engine running, that's super loud. You're gonna be able to hear that going down the road. Also, you've got a little port up here for some additional heated gear. Maybe you've got a heated vest or jacket you want to plug in there, easy to do. And then right here, you've got a little phone slot as well. So Case's phone right here, he has an iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's not going to fit, um, it might with the case off, but I've got the smaller version of the phone, the regular 12 Pro and that fits no problem. Latch that down. You've got a safe spot for your phone and it even has a little fan in here keep your phone cool. If you look right on the front of this BMW's fairing, you can see the sensor for the active cruise control. This is an option and a pretty interesting one. 
So if you come over here to the handlebar, the way that this works is you flip the cruise control on by pushing the switch to the side, and then you can set your speed. You can also increase your speed one mile per hour at a time, or if you press and hold it, you'll go by five mile per hour increments. You can also adjust what distance that you follow the vehicles in front of you at, but the bike, like a lot of modern cars, will sense the speeding up and slowing down of the vehicles in front of you and do the same. And it's a pretty interesting feeling. Now, I'm gonna have to test out the active cruise control. Traffic is kind of picking up and slowing down a little bit here. So I think this is gonna be the right time to test it. So to flip on your active cruise control, you switch, flip the switch over to the right, and then once you've hit a speed that you're happy with, you hit set. Now, the lowest speed it would appear that I can set it to is 20. But with my hand off the throttle, you can see it's picking up speed. And then as these cars slow down, it reduces your speed again. So that's actually a pretty awesome feature. This R18B for Bagger is not the only new version of the R18. There's also the new R18 Transcontinental. And I had a chance to ride that last week and it was cool. But between the two, I personally prefer this Bagger because it's 64 pounds lighter. And even though they're both around about 900 pound bikes, the Bagger definitely feels a lot sportier and more spry. And it's missing a couple features, but not too many. One of the biggest differences between this bagger and the Transcontinental is that the Transcontinental has a top case. This bagger obviously doesn't have that, but you do still have some side cases. And the coolest thing about these side cases is the way that they're built. So that is a very, very solid lock system. It's got a really nice feel to it. But if you look into this side case, you can see that uh, these speakers, these Marshall speakers, they sound really good, but they definitely intrude into your storage space a little bit. So uh, if you're going on really, really long trips then the Transcontinental might make sense, but I would say if you're doing a shorter weekend trip and you can manage to pack light, I think this would be fine. Now listen, when I latch this up, that is the best thing about this R18. It is so nicely built. Everything that you touch feels fantastic. Another interesting thing that I had to get used to hopping on this R18 bagger is the heel toe shifter. Now, for you guys that ride baggers all the time, this is probably nothing new, um, but I actually think it's pretty cool. I was surprised at how quickly I got into using this heel shifter. I think it's a lot easier to just kick down on the back part of the shifter than it is to try and tuck your toe under the front. It's just very accessible and it actually becomes pretty intuitive after not that much riding. There's something that we really want to test here, uh, and I've actually had a chance to try this out already, but Alex has not. This is the reverse on the R18. When you flip it down, that basically just lets you engage the rear wheel with a starter motor, press the starter button once you're flipped into reverse, and the bike will move backwards. What I want to do is have Alex hop on it, and you can see his first ever impressions of reversing a motorcycle. All right, so I guess I'll try it with the bike off first. First, I gotta get this massive, massive bike off the kickstand. Ugh. There we go, straighten the wheel out. Oh my God, this thing is massive. Okay, so flick this into reverse. It's showing reverse right there. So let's just try it with the motor off, see what happens. It is just the starter motor. And I don't think that's gonna work, so put it back into the forward gear. Now it says we're in neutral. That little shimmy is a little bit of a weird feeling, but flick it back into reverse, showing reverse up here. Oh my God. That's easier than I thought it would be. Yeah, just little taps and you're able to, uh, to back the bike up. That's a really weird feeling, having a bike walk itself out from under you. Uh, but I like it, there's no way, I, I mean, let's try it. So I mean, it's doable, but it's not ideal. And I'm basically on flat level ground right now. So if I were on any kind of a hill, 
that would be totally necessary. That's really cool. There are a lot of fantastic materials on this BMW R18. I would say it's maybe the best thing about it. It's very German. Uh, one cool bit is that this dash material is actually kind of a, a leathery fabric. It's, uh, it's cool. This is a lot nicer feeling than just a random plastic. Now, the fairings are, of course, composite and the side cases are composite, but most everything else on the rest of the motorcycle is metal. So if we move up to the front, of course, your front fender is metal, but even your fork covers right there, those are all metal. Of course, your tank is metal. And actually, what about these? No, that's composite. But there is a lot of metal. There's a lot of really nice badging, a lot of nice materials. The latches, like I pointed out, are really nicely put together. So that's one of the coolest things about this motorcycle. And it's kind of hard to make that come through on video. So if you have a chance, if you're in the market for a bagger, you should walk around one of these and just poke it feel all the different things that they built it with. Now the braking system on the R18 is pretty cool. If you apply the front brake, it'll send 70% of the braking to the front and 30% to the rear. And if you apply the rear brake, it'll send 70% to the rear and 30 to the front. So no matter which brake lever you press, you're gonna get some braking on both wheels. It's dual 300 millimeter discs in the front and a single 300 millimeter disc in the rear and they work well, they're grabby. Another interesting detail on this R18 is its key. The key looks, well, a lot like the fuel tank and it's pretty cool. So this one is a first edition, which is why it's got these special graphics on it. And what you can do with the key is lock and unlock the side cases, which is pretty nice. The other thing that this key has is an actual blade style key and it folds sort of like some of the keys did on old school airhead BMWs, like an R65 that used to be at the motorcycle shop that I worked at. And I was never really sure why the key on that old school BMW folded because it was otherwise like a normal key. So let me know in the comments if you know why that is. But this modern R18 key is very cool. And of course it's a proximity key so you can just keep it in your pocket, hit the power button and you're good to go. Maybe my favorite piece of design on this entire motorcycle is this exposed drive shaft that is nickel plated and really cool to look at. I wish there was a way that you could turn your head back and watch this as you go down the road, but I definitely don't recommend trying to do that. The R18 Bagger starts pricing at $21,945, but there's a number of packages you can add on top of that base price. This particular one has a $2,150 first edition package, which gets you the white pinstriping. And I will say that white pinstriping does look really good. But if I had my pick of the options, I would go for the $2,400 Galaxy Dust Metallic paint because it looks wicked cool. $2,400 is a lot of money to spend on a paint color. But I think it adds a lot to that motorcycle. So if you're in the market for one of these, if you're gonna buy one, please consider that paint because I'd love to see it out on the road. Be sure to stay tuned because we're going to shoot a lot more with this motorcycle. We're gonna get it out on the road for a big ride, do something cool with it. So you'll see that very soon and we'll catch you in the next video.